good evening and welcome to the Chicago Westside Branch NAACP. Uh, we are here for this quarter for the next, uh, till the end of December. I am Phyllis Logan, your host, the Chicago Westside Branch's uh, first vice president, but also the housing and economic sustainability chair, uh, committee chair. Uh, I am also graciously honored to be uh, the NAACP's uh, Illinois State Conference second vice president as well as the economic chair for the state of Illinois. I have a guest this evening, but I'm going to give you our agenda. We have a big topic, a big agenda this evening, and we want to get through as much as possible. And anytime, feel free to call in. We are live, interactive, 312-738-1060 is the call-in number. Call in with your questions or your comments on our topics, or if you just want to uh, ask a question, feel free to do so. I'm also going to give you our information. The NAACP Westside Branch, we're located at 5820 West Chicago Avenue. Our membership is power and we welcome you to become members. Our monthly meeting is the first Saturday of every month at 1 p.m. at our address, 5820 West Chicago Avenue. And if you have questions after the show, feel free to call our office at 773 261 Five eight nine zero, and Carl Brinson is our president, and I'm the first vice president. So, our agenda this evening, we're going to cover uh, a topic that we talked in the past on a community benefits agreement. We'll let give you an update on where we are with that and other community events. We have lots of uh, community event uh, community events uh, that we think will interest you. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the state of housing. And the black and black America and the lending institutions and how those two are tied in together as far as qualifying and our st uh, st statistics on uh, black home ownership in black America. Uh, that's in the United States of America all over. And then I've got a guest with me this evening. Uh, she's going to tell you a little bit about herself, LaDonna. We're going to talk about the, ch the Children's Health Insurance Program. The chip, and she's going to give you some updates on that. So, uh, and then we have a couple of announcements that we want to make at the end of the show. Before the end of the show, we want you to come out and be a part of those. So, our guest this evening. Um, but let me do one other thing. We want to thank Can TV again for welcoming welcoming us back. Uh, Can TV is live. If you don't have uh, cable channel twenty one. Uh, then you're still able to watch the show live on your computer at cantv.org uh, backslash live, and you'll be able to still see uh, our program live and be able to call in with your questions or comments. So um, with that, our guest, LaDonna, LaDonna, uh, you've got this interest in the children's and the CHIP program. Tell us, uh, what, introduce yourself, and then talk about it. Greetings. I am LaDonna. Uh, I'm an urgent, I have an urgent delivery today, um, delivered from the National Association of the NAACP. Um, it's just an urgent action alert, letting everyone know that the Children's Health Care Insurance Program, also known as CHIP, uh, which provides health insurance programs to over 9 million children uh, within the United States, will lose its federal funding if it's not reauthorized. Um, we just want to let everyone know that this is a serious issue. It's a concern amongst women, children of all levels under the 300 uh, percent poverty levels of the United States of America. Um, it's basically to just let everyone know that the health care bill, it needs to be reauthorized. We want everyone to flood the airways, give a call to your legislators, to your uh, senators, representatives. And uh, these are our national representatives, U.S. These congressmen? Are, these are our national congressmen. Um, there is a main switchboard number that everyone can give a call to. It's uh, area code 202-224-3121. Once again, that's area code 202-224-3121. You can just give a call. Uh, that's a basic switchboard. Let everyone know that you would like this bill to be reassigned. 
reinstate her. Very good. So the NAACP, we cover lots of concerns, and uh, this one with over... Uh, how many uh, million children are affected by this? Over 900 million children. 900 million children okay. nationally are affected by this bill. If they do not reauthorize it, uh, you know, I, I could see a lot of people having concerns with this. Uh, it, a child without, or a family, or single mom, rather, uh, without health insurance, or a low-income family uh, with, a, with two parents, two-parent household, uh, could have many issues with this. Uh, what what are some of the effects that if this is not reauthorized, what are some what would be some of the effects of this? Definitely, from just our basic, uh, you know, family issues, concerns with going to the doctor regularly. Children need to be in the doctor's office yearly. That needs to be reinstated throughout schools. It needs. You know, for for emergency purposes, you know, your child falls. You can't simply take your child to the doctor and avoid a five thousand dollar medical bill that you'll receive in the mail due to not having coverage. We want everyone to have coverage, and you know, basically, everyone can't afford coverage. And so we have this bill in place so that everyone can be sustained with some amount of coverage. And health insurance is a big issue. We hear that nationally where they're trying to, uh, you know, get rid of the uh, uh, affordable uh, health care. Uh, and is this part, this is part of the affordable health care. This is definitely healthcare. a part of the Affordable Health Care Act, uh, which has been established since 1827. Um, it has our legislators clear in action to definitely service all of the communities in the United States, especially those who are of low income. Very low, low and very low income. So the NAACP, we're all about economic empowerment, economic justice, as well as economic prosperity. So we know that the health issue is a main issue, and if kids are not healthy, then it affects their education, it affects their livelihood, it affects their well-being to participate as citizens amongst us all. So this is very important. You want to give that number out again? Absolutely. You can just give a call to uh, your state representative or both senators of your area. Um, that number is fairly easy. It's area code 202-224-3121. Once again, that's t area code 202-224-3121. It's just the main switchboard. Anyone can dial from anywhere you are. And you can just let them know who your congressman is, but just let them know you're concerned about the reauthorization of this uh, CHIP uh, funding. They need to do that. It's important that they do that. Uh, once again, we are live, interactive, 312 Seven three eight one zero six zero. Call in with your uh, questions or concerns. Uh, we uh, really chose this special hour, seven thirty p.m., to be able to communicate with a lot more families than we have in the past, and we're hoping uh, that you're able to join us every Monday at seven thirty p.m. here on Can TV Twenty One. If you do not have cable channel. Uh, 21, then you can always, if you have access to a computer, you can always go online and still watch us live and be interactive with our conversation on cantv.org backslash live and look up the NAACP Chicago Westside Branch and join in with us. So uh, with that, I wanted to give a little bit more information on what the NAACP really, uh, what we do. Um, much of the concern is wrapped around uh, one simple federal provision, and that is the Civil Rights Act of uh, 1968. Uh, you know, the Fair Housing Act was part of that. Uh, we prohibit the Fair the Civil Rights Act under the Fair Housing Act really prohibits discrimination uh, concerning the sale, rental, and financing of housing based on race, religion, national origin, and sex. This is intended as a follow-up to the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And this bill was the subject of a contentious debate in, in the U.S. Senate, but was passed easily by the House of Representatives in the days after the assassination of civil rights leader Martin Luther King, Jr. 
the act stands as the final great legislative achievement of the civil rights era. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is because uh, in a couple of weeks we'll have uh, one of our community advocate groups, uh, the National so Association for the Real Estate Brokers, will come on and talk about the state of housing in black America and the lending institutions. There's a couple of events that are going on in the upcoming weeks that talks about the activity of our major banks, um, the major lending uh, institutions that are out there and how they are really promoting accessibility to housing. But uh, NARAB will give us an assessment, a study that they did that will recap uh, the state of housing in black America. It is so important that we understand uh, with so much uh, re revitalization going on, uh, where do African Americans fit in in this prosperity route that we're in? The financial markets crashed in 2008. Uh, our communities took a huge hit. Uh, but now there are many developers out there doing great things to revitalize our communities and bring them back apart, bring them back up to par. And this is going on across the United States across the state of Illinois, and specifically in the city of Chicago. And we want all of our families to be aware, uh, you know, wealth building comes with home ownership. Uh, but we're going to give you the state of, this study shows the, the you know, inequities, inequity, inequities amongst uh, the black population and all of the other cultures, ethnic groups, races across the state of Illinois, as well as the United States of America. And we're going to give you that study in a couple of weeks. Uh, but advancing yourself in wealth really starts with home ownership. So once again, it's all based on the civil rights uh, and you having access to fair housing. Uh, discrimination is truly uh, uh, prohibited, but we know that it still happens throughout the United States of America as currently as today. Uh, we will bring samples of discrimination to you so that you can uh, uh, be able to see for yourself that these, dis these, these discriminatory acts are still happening today. And if you have issues with those, that's what the NAACP is all about. So once again, we're live, interactive. Give us a call, 312-738-1060. Be a part of the conversation. If you have questions for LaDonna in reference to the CHIPS program, Please call in, let us know your concerns and how we can assist you in helping to be a voice in this matter. The CHIP program has to be reinstated, and that's the bottom line. It just needs to be reinstated. Your congressman, if you're on the west side of Chicago in the 7th Congressional District, that's Congressman Davis. If you're on the south side, that's Congressman Bobby Rush. If you're further south in the south suburban areas, that's Congresswoman... Um, I forget her name. <laughs> What's her name, Vernon? <laughs> okay. And she's, I'm looking at her face, but I forget her name. If you're on the north side, you know, I know Jan Schakowsky is another state uh, U.S. congressman. So, and our state senators, Dick Durbin and um, uh, our war veteran, uh, Tammy Duckwork. Okay. Those are our two state senators. So, when you call this number, you want to give that all, number out again? All, uh, of course. All lines lead to um, this common denominator, the switchboard number. It's area code 202-224-3121. Once again, that's area code 202-224-3121. Let's get this reinstated so that we will be covered Cover our children, cover our families, cover our low-income families, our, our single mothers. Let's cover everyone within the state of Illinois, the United States of America, till the next... <laughs> Say that again, Vernon. Robin Kelly. Robin Kelly, thank oh. you. Robin Kelly's on the south side. Greatly appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, Vernon. <laughs> Let's cover everyone with health care, affordable health care, to the year 2022. Let's give us yes. some time to figure things out. Yes. So with that, uh, once again, our office uh, is at 5820 West Chicago Avenue, our president, Carl Brinson. Uh, but you can always call our office if you have other questions after this evening, 773-261-5890. Um, 
and, and we'll continue to uh, pass on that information to you. So uh, with that, let's go on to another topic that you can always uh, uh, be in touch with us on another topic that we're tracking, payday lenders. Uh, just this week, actually September 28th, uh, there was uh, payday lending, uh, the payday lending uh, enterprise. Uh, they've had, uh, oh, in Philadelphia, and this happens throughout the United States of America, uh, there's, a, there's been some huge racketeering charges uh, for payday lenders. These are your uh, uh, check and go uh, places, uh, the loans uh, that you get for in excess of a hundred percent interest rate through many of these services, uh, auto title loans. Uh, these are all payday lending activities, and some of these establishments have been charging people in excess of seven hundred percent on the dollar uh, for these loans, which is caused causing. Uh, grave concern within our communities. We have got to do a better job at educating our consumers on utilizing the bank as a means to save your money, build wealth uh, by saving your money, establishing uh, savings accounts, checking accounts, emergencies uh, checking accounts, uh, savings accounts, opening savings accounts for your kids, for uh, college funds. We have got to do a better job and, and setting ourselves up to uh, build wealth as opposed to being uh, scrutinized and, and led by all of these scams that are out there. These guys are in Philadelphia, and th this is just one space, Philadelphia, were charged with literally uh, conspiring to, to evade state regulations on an interest rate cap that they had, and they're... <coughs> interest rate on these loans from 2008 to 2013, uh, which they took in over $700 million off of consumers, charging an interest rate at 700%. I, I can't even calculate that uh, for a short-term loan, six-month loan, 700%. But they were charged in Philadelphia, and we're tracking this in the state of Illinois. state of Illinois does not have a usury law either, which is a cap on how much interest these these markets, these payday lending uh, spaces can charge you, but we're 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 focused on having a cap on that interest rate. And in Chicago, the interest rates are a little over uh, two hundred percent. These guys in Philadelphia were charged with exceeding seven hundred percent interest rate on payday loans. That is just high. Out in Philadelphia is doing an awesome job. Uh, you know, reining these. Uh, guys in uh, and, and charging them with racketeering. So that's just one area that we do on to bring that information to you. Uh, now we're going to go back to our first topic that I listed, community benefits agreement. Lots have ha lots had ha has happened over the last uh, over the community benefits agreement. We've uh, got our language together uh, next week or within the next two weeks. Uh, we will be having meetings with our elected official agreement, what we're asking for in this, uh, which came to be because of the schools that were closed up on the west side of Chicago. You know that there were over 50 uh, elementary schools closed up, um, 50 schools closed up over the last, uh, over the last uh, two years. Uh, and then what we needed to do was find a way to not uh, have these buildings be sold to the public at our expense. So the Chicago public school system will in turn uh, put these buildings out for auction. And we had a real issue, community issue, with bringing in new types of, of uh, of businesses that really were not beneficial to the community. Uh, we have uh, the Emmett School not to proceed forward. Uh, they wanted to continue to talk with us, the NAACP as well as other community groups. Uh, they did, and Emmett School went back up for auction. So there's Emmett School, there's Key School, there's a couple of other schools on the west side of Chicago that we're still concerned with, uh, with developers uh, getting these, bidding for these, and getting them for pennies on the, on the schools and rebuilding, but rebuilding what? 
Uh, so we've asked under the Community Benefits Agreement that any developer, whatever they, whatever they want to build, they need to come to the community and let us know what their plans are first. Uh, let, it, let us see or hear uh, if it benefits us. Make sure that in the neighborhood, quality jobs, uh, livable wage jobs, uh, those opportunities are offered to the community residents first and then have first dibs at any contracts that this new development may bring. Uh, that's part of what the broader scope of what a community benefits agreement would do for our stakeholders, for us, the stakeholders within our community. So we're looking for uh, meetings with our elected officials within the next couple of weeks, our local aldermen. Uh, we're talking to uh, many of the aldermen on the west side, Alderman Chris Talaferro, Alderman Emma Mitz, Alderman Jason Irving, uh, and there's uh, Alderman uh, out of the 24th Ward, uh, Smith, I think, I think it's Smith. Uh, but we're looking to speak to all of them in reference to a community benefits agreement. We want them to take us into consideration before they take into consideration what the developers can do for them. Uh, we know that there's a means to them uh, the developers as contributors to the campaign of the alderman, and that's one of our big issues to say campaigns matter more so than the residents do. That needs to stop, and this community benefits agreement would echo uh, their concerns uh, for us if they were to sign on. After we get the, uh, once we get the alderman, uh, the elected officials uh, to join in with us, then we will be hosting several community meetings. And we have to get you, the community, to come out and voice your opinion and voice your uh, thoughts on what you think, what businesses should or should not be, what developments should or should not be in your community. So that's coming up real soon, but we want to talk more on that community benefits agreement in the coming months, uh, next three months, over the course of the next three months. So once again, uh, I am Phyllis Logan your host, and we want to thank KNTV. We're here till the end of December, every Monday, 7.30 p.m. Tell a friend, tell a family member, tell a colleague to please join in, watch us. Uh, and then, as always, call our office if you have any questions or comments uh, that, uh, that you have that come up after, 773-261-5890. Uh, and I just wanted to announce very briefly, on uh, this coming Friday, we have, because we're co so concerned about the activities in our community, we have a general contractors, uh, either you uh, have your GC license or you don't, this coming Friday, October 6th, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at our office location, 5820 West Chicago Avenue, we're going to uh, be featuring how to start a business, uh, if uh, how to structure your business, a limited liability uh, corporation or partnership, an LLC as they call them, uh, a small business, you're the entrepreneur. We also want to talk about how to register your business, how to get HUD Section 3 contracts and CHA opportunities, and how to stay in business, uh, being in compliance, reporting your taxes, uh, having your banking uh, account up to date, your insurance, uh, getting bonded, and where to get help when you need it. So that's upcoming this Friday, uh, October the 6th, 5820 West Chicago Avenue. We welcome you. Uh, it's free, open to the public. Uh, to call our office to pre-register uh, so that you can be in the audience. We have limited seats, but we look to see you then. So with that, um, we're going to thank you very much and show the overhead one more time. This Friday, October the 6th, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., our general contractors meeting. And with that, I am Phyllis Logan, your host. This we're going to say this, this Friday, the, this is for this Friday. Oh, and this Saturday is our meeting. Thank you, Vernon. This Saturday is our uh, monthly meeting. Uh, at 1 p.m. at 5820 West Chicago Avenue as well. So we look to see you then, and I want to thank everyone uh, who, who are viewing, uh, did not call in. Feel free to call in with your questions or comments anytime we're on the air. We appreciate it, and we look to see you again next Monday. Thank you, and have a good evening.